So we are currently in Nagpur Metro Station where students have parked. Uh, we have four year students, and we ask a few questions uh, by a reporter, and we want to answer all of those. Uh, so the uh, first question answered a uh, question to us was how often are you listening to the sounds of explosion? Very often at a very regular intervals we get to hear it. And how was the experience staying in the night at the metro station? It's very crowded. The temperature is not as high according to the situation. Like minus fifty degree and we are just sitting there and we can't even sleep because of this. Just the one hour we have slept. Yeah, yeah sorry. Really, just one hour because of this call and also the scary situation. We can't even sleep, and it was really scary. Since we didn't have supplies, also because we had no uh, ready list what to carry, what to do, we just keep uh, expecting some random evacuation. Uh, we had to stay there at night for two meters. And what are the people from the Indian Embassy telling you? Actually, they have a lot of people. They are not getting enough And what are the local Ukrainians doing? Are they escaping to the other countries? We got our neighbors shifting, packing, leaving by the cars. Most probably, we can expect that. And uh, are you planning to move to the western part of Ukraine? That's actually, that's actually impossible. It's not planning to move to the western part of Ukraine. Moving to the western part of the country is actually impossible for us. It's it's not even here. It's like I don't know an extreme opposite end. Now we are yeah. staying in the extreme eastern end to the Russian border, and uh, moving to the western border is actually this impossible. It's yeah. impractical in this current situation. The only border we share is with Russia. Russia. Yeah. Yeah. And even if you are ready to take the risk, there's no guaranteed safety in carrying that. It's very difficult to move to the western part. For example, when you explain it, going to Lviv by road or by train or any uh, transport, it will take at least eleven hours. So traveling from eleven hours from Kharkiv to Lviv, we cannot assure that we reach there safely. So. Once you reach Lviv, it might be easy because I think Poland is an hour far away from Lviv, so and we that have is the very. Information that even the uh, students of Lviv, they don't have no. it. They are not rescued. Then how are we going? At least we would have been thankful that the evacuation process has started. Since we also say that we are in the flats, waiting for the support, it's kind of demotivating, and we need some good hopes. And uh, did you book flights earlier to come back? Yeah, of course, not yet. But then, uh, when we booked, the time that we booked was the first of the first week of March. So this was quite unexpected. And the next question is, what about your studies? Yeah, so, about that. Yeah, about that. We have to think about our lives. We are here. Can I write down here because of our university, we are responsible for this. Because we, the last one month. The whole students who were asking, the monitors on our behalf were asking for legally request to the teacher, the dean, director, everyone to make it online so we can go back to India, be safe. But they were like, no, nothing is happening. No, just look out from the window. There is no bombardment. There is no. Can you see any sort of war? So it is completely safe. You can stay back. You can attend online class. Sorry, offline class. Everything. So they. Didn't let us go. So they are really much responsible yeah, for us. In fact, I attended a class uh, just the day before all this. So they made sure that we really get into that situation that everything is normal. Just calm down. It's been for eight years, and don't prepare for everything. And suddenly they just like, "Okay, that's normal." So 
Yesterday was the first day of explosion that we heard. Yesterday they declined online classes. God knows what for. Until then, all all classes were taken offline. Until uh, except for the students who had COVID issues. So yesterday was the first day that they made classes online. So right now, all that we have to say is, please, the Ukraine or the Indian Embassy, please get involved. Please help us evacuate from this place. Куда сын на работе одна? Куда мне бежать? Куда ховатися? Куда скажите, будь ласка? Ой, боже мой, боже мой! Shelling in Mariupol in southeastern Ukraine started on Thursday confirming what most Ukrainians had feared. <laughs> Residents rushed to leave the city after Russia declared war on the country. <laughs> and it's no longer just the separatist East under attack. Explosions have been heard across the country. Including the capital. When the shelling began, air raid sirens rang out across Kiev. President Zelensky called on Ukrainian citizens to remain calm and urged them to stay indoors. Today, from you, from each of you, it is necessary to be calm. It is necessary to be calm. We are working. The army is working. While some are following orders, like those taking refuge in a school's bomb shelter in Kharkiv, Ukraine's second largest city, and others sheltering in a metro station, some are fleeing their homes as long queues of cars line the road out of Kiev. This Kharkiv resident said he was hit by what felt like broken glass after an explosion shattered the windows of his house. Где-то рядом рванула стекла, потому что повыбивали, потому что ну камушками по ногам сзади дало. Думал эти осколки стекла. His neighbor was rushed away in an ambulance. Его скорая увезла. Ранение что левой ноги, я не знаю, осколок, не осколок, но крови много. Just a few hours after Putin issued an order to invade, Zelensky responded by imposing martial law. He issued a plea for all citizens prepared to defend the country to come forward. Кожен, хто має бойовий досвід і може приєднатися до оборони України, повинен негайно прибути до відповідних центрів комплектації. But against the might of Europe's largest army, a newly formed and inexperienced Ukrainian militia will need significant support from its allies. The West have said that they will respond with economic and military support, as well as sanctions. Shortly after four o'clock this morning, I spoke to President Zelensky of Ukraine to offer the continued support of the UK, because our worst fears have now come true and all our warnings have proved tragically accurate. Reports of casualties are coming in thick and fast. And with every moment spent attempting to find a diplomatic solution, the death toll can